Good morning, everybody. So before we start, uh, we will just seek the blessings of the Almighty. That was a short prayer to invoke the blessings of Almighty. I now request our director, Dr. H.R. Venkatesha Sir, Acharya Bangalore B School, to do the inaugural address to the participants. Good morning to all the participants uh, who are participating from across the country. Uh, this is Dr. H.R. Venkatesha, director of Acharya Bangalore B School. I uh, wholeheartedly welcome you all to this uh, FDP program. We have lined up speakers from across the country and abroad who would speak on technology management. And uh, uh, I wish you would have a great take home from this uh, FDP program, which is sponsored by AACTE. The topic of uh, FDP is technology management. We know that technology is the harbinger of change and technology is ruling the business and industrial world in addition to our social and economic space. If you look at from industry 1.0 to industry 4.0 in which era we are living today, from steam engine to the basket of technologies from including artificial intelligence, blockchain, robotics, and varied, uh, you know, uh, technologies are ruling the business, economics, and industrial world today. Keeping this point in mind, we thought that the technology management has to be the topic for FDP. I profoundly thank my faculty coordinator, Dr. Jivaratna, who has taken all the pain to put things in place and it is rolled out today as an FTP sponsored by AACT. Coming to the topic of uh, the FTP technology management, we have seen that every organization, whether it can be a business organization or a non-governmental organization like an education institution, every organization in this era is influenced by the technology. We have to live with technology and most of the time for all our problems, solution also is in technology and technology brings in out of the box and technology brings in strategic changes in organizations. To give you an insight, there was an article in Harvard Business Review which states that to look at the sustainability problem, for example, we are talking about ecological sustainability, we are talking about sustainable business, we are talking about business which can be, uh, you know, uh, we can hand, it hand over to the generations to come. How to solve the problem of sustainability, eco-sustainability, for example. And there were three aspects to this problem. One problem is every year our consumption is increasing. In the near to uh, you know medium term, I don't see any chance of consumption coming down. Another problem could be population or it could be solution. In the sense, today population is 7 billion, that is 700 crores population we have in the world today. It can be brought down. If it is brought down, that is a great solution to the ecological problem. Now, the question I pose to all the participants of this FDP is, is there any chance of reducing the population in the near to medium term? I don't see. The experts are imagining or calculating that world population will not stabilize until it reaches 12 billion, that is 1,200 crores. Can we think of a lifestyle 
where we can reduce the consumption i don't see that everybody wants to live like north americans everybody wants to consume more everybody wants more power more automobiles more consumption of course i am happy in one way covid has brought some halt and break to this but i don't think human nature would change in this sense the point i am trying to drive is in the near to medium term i don't see any possibility of reducing the population which can be a solution for ecological sustainability in the near to medium term i don't see any possibility of reducing the consumption in the near to medium term then what is the solution the people are talking about technology technology is a great solution provider technology gives answer to many of our problems it could be electric cars it could be solar power for lighting our home we know that more than 60% of the pollution in the world is created by the power generation and power related aspects and if you can tap the solar power i think we are giving great solution to the problem which is nagging us for decades the point i am trying to drive is this for ecological problem the solution is not reducing consumption not reducing the population which are not possible the only solution is using technology and it is true with organizations we have seen from industry 1.0 to 1 24.0 the organizations which have capitalized on the technology have done well have done extremely well and they are the harbingers of change what you have seen it could be apple it could be microsoft it could be dell or it could be any company you talk about amazon all these companies have made use of the technology and it is true with marketing it is true with finance it is true with hr i request all of you to sensitize your students i know all of you are academicians and all of you and most of you are from management background or commerce background or business background and when you teach students please sensitize them about the importance of technology in every facets of our life in every facet of our uh, you know uh, organizations life it could be marketing it could be hr it could be finance and not only that from salt to software you take any sector there also technology plays a very important role and believe me the next decade belongs to the companies and organizations who capitalize on the technological development if you do not do that you become obsolete and no organization wants to become obsolete out of date therefore uh, it is our responsibility to you know sensitize educate our students about the importance of technology in you know uh, organizations whether they are building an organization as an entrepreneur or joining as an employee of an organization i i do not uh, you know take uh, much of your time between uh, the experts who are lined up to uh, talk on different aspects of technology management and i have my colleague now and uh, you know he is an industry guy and worked in different countries uh, 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 you know he he would inaugurate the session and i i am sure uh, you would have uh, you know a feast of uh, you know uh, knowledge that comes on your way in this uh, one week fdp what we have organized at acharya bangalore bee school uh in association with uh, aict i thank my colleague dr jeeva for giving me an opportunity to share few of my thoughts all the best and i welcome all of you to this online fdp whenever there is a chance visit my b school acharya bangalore b school welcome to acharya bangalore b school thank you thank you sir, thank you, sir. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> thanks for that uh, great opening and as you rightly said technology has been uh, you know changing to great extent and it's time for a business organization and many of us as individuals to adapt to the coming technological scenarios and i feel like uh, 
if we say technology, it shouldn't be just about all the network or sort of things. So just to you know, open this session with a small uh, icebreaker. Why not we just see the significance of this uh, beyond technology? What is important for us? This is wild Karnataka. I hope uh, some of you were smiling uh, when you were seeing that uh, video. So this was a, a small, uh, you know, welcome uh, video sent by our executive director, Sir Ajitesh Pasani Reddy. Uh, we would like to sincerely render our apologies. Uh, sir has asked me to convey this message due to some unavoidable uh, schedules, because this is the first time I see him missing the session. And uh, that was a video conveyed by Yasser, uh, where he wanted to communicate that with technology, there is also uh, important uh, things which we need to look around in our ecology. I now welcome Dr. Rajesh C. And I would like to introduce you to our speaker of this session. We couldn't think of any, uh, you know, great expert than our Rajesh sir, who is quite popular and uh, has been taking the subjects, technology management related, digital marketing and project management subjects for a long time. Sir has worked with companies in the pharmaceutical and manufacturing space in India and China. With a corporate career of eight years under his belt, his marketing course modules are engaging, relevant and practical. Sir also was engaged in designing a digital marketing syllabus for various PGDM, he PGDM programs. He is presently heading our department of MBA. With his rich experience, he has been handling technology management to the postgraduate programs here at ABBS, and even he addresses as a keynote speaker for a few of the other sessions on request. Sir has a great amount of exposure because he keeps traveling a lot and uh, when it comes to technology, sir would be the right person to, you know, open our FTP sessions. So I welcome uh, Dr. Rajesh uh, Chandrasekhar, sir. Please welcome him. So please join us and uh, over to Rajesh, sir. Good morning, all professors here online attending the FTP. And firstly, I thank uh, Jio Man, okay, for that uh, introduction. OK, so though it is a very big intro, OK, maybe it is not so much. OK, yes, still I'm a learner. OK, and uh, I, I think OK, still I have much gap OK, to be filled up. So with all these things, OK, let me take up my session today morning. OK, not uh, missing out much. OK, and today morning it is something very big thing. What I'm going to see at ABBS is that I am relaying from my director search place. OK, I'm going live today and then also, one more uh, thing is that I'm virtually meeting so many learned people 
or online okay at one place all this time we had experience of teaching something online to students okay today we have so many people online who are also the teachers at some other college so i welcome everyone for this ftp session okay so i'll be directly moving into my um program okay i will be sharing my things good morning everyone on the session again okay and i welcome you to the aict adult sponsored FET fdp program okay at uh, acharya bangalore business school okay titled as technology management okay which we feel more relevant more necessary and more futuristic okay to be taken up at this point of time we sincerely thank all the sponsoring agencies okay our coordinator and also all the faculty members who are present here for the program uh, this program is run by for one week okay so that is from starting from today till 18th of december okay we try our best to keep the flow in a good way and then i hope all the arrangements are in place okay with uh, all the plus and minuses do happening okay so now okay this is an program okay run by acharya bangalore business school okay a triple accredited school in south india okay we have an nba uh, accreditation okay we have uh, yeah iscbe from usa and also we are NAC certified okay so these are the things which we wanted to say you and hope you all had gone through the brochures okay what we had seen and uh, websites too okay so today i'll be starting my session session one okay that is introduction to the fdp especially the technology management aspect so this session um, is for one and a half hours. OK, uh, this is what I'm looking at. So greetings, everyone. OK, welcome to this session and myself, Dr. Rajesh Chandrasekhar. So I have an MBA. I cleared my net and I did my PhD. And today I am at Acharya Bangalore Business School at the position of associate professor. OK, and uh, I'm very open for networking okay, with most of the lot of people here. OK, so if you find any questions okay, which I could not answer here or maybe you have suggestion for my improvement, you're always welcome to email me. OK, so Rajesh.c at acharyabbs.ac.in. OK, so as a learner OK, and also as a colleague, OK, today let me start my um, presentation. OK, so I am not considering this to be an uh, teacher student kind of a presentation. OK, it's more of a pure understanding. OK, so I could be having so many people OK, who had already seen what I'm going to speak today. OK, but I think I will add some more value or at least it will be a refreshment of what you have already been teaching to your students. OK. So if I'm on the same line of your thinking, uh, please consider me uh, or this presentation as a repetition and make it perfect. OK, and if we have some new people who had not experienced this particular subject, OK, maybe you can think as a learning opportunity. OK, and nothing like student and uh, faculty related things. OK, so with all these things, OK, let me go through the uh, slide today. Starting with is that the key learnings. OK, yes. Uh, always we need to have a flow okay? and then we say what is that you get attending to my program for next one hour 10 minutes okay what is that you're going to take away so all the participants here okay will be able to understand the concept of technology management at the three levels okay one is at the micro or we can go in the ascending order okay it's from the macro level micro level and at the personal level so that is the first thing okay you'll understand how this technology and what is this technology and how it is managed OK, at three different levels. OK, and uh, next one is understand the concepts of technology management leading to strategic framework. That is how to conceptualize and put into certain steps to manage the technology OK, within an organization. So the, when coming back, we shall go to the first point again. OK, the macro is the environment, is the external environment, like the pestle and the pestle air environment, what you're going to speak. And then uh, that is the macro level and the micro level is at the organizational level. OK, which we can control the environment, which we can control. OK, and at the personal level is individual technology management. OK, so this is what the three levels. OK, what we need to understand. And when we go to the third one, OK, is that you will get an idea about the need. Okay, What's the need of technology management? The nature, how it is available and why it need to be done. OK, is there an usage okay, of this technology management concept Okay, in India especially? And then you will also be able to understand the you know, a point, okay, where we speak about the broader developments in. Okay, so sorry, yeah, slides are not moving, I think. So, yeah, now we can move. Yeah, I don't think okay, I don't want to use F5, okay. So let me go with this. Yeah, so this is better, I think. So this is my intro, okay. What I'm speaking, okay. So before to this was the slide. OK, so this is a session name. 
Okay, and the timing. Okay, though there is an plus or the minus 20 minutes is already eroded. Okay, we shall not worry about that. Okay, because my presentation is simple and general in nature for today, giving an introduction. Okay. So this is about my name and uh, what I'm into and which is organization. Okay. And uh, the key learnings, okay, what you're going to take from this session, that is what I'm going to share here, is about what I would, what I said now is micro, macro, and personal level, okay, of technology management, okay. And understanding of the concepts of technology management leading to strategic framework, that's what we understood. And the third one is why it is needed, okay, what's the nature of technology management, and what is rational of using this technology management from the Indian perspective. Okay, so we'll also be touching one point, okay, of the global perspective. Okay, we shall see it at last. And we should, we'll also understand the broader developments, okay, at what is that going on today around the world, okay? So, at again, three levels, okay, one is at the international, one is at national, and one, and one more is at organizational, okay? And also, we will touch one point of how we can manage things personally, okay? So, this is what. So now let us get into the introduction topic. Okay, so what really is uh, necessary to take care of? Okay, so over the time in this FTP, okay, so people will be speaking about various uh, technologies, okay, and things like that. Okay, so uh, what is that really they are going to see is one, uh, we'll be speaking about the technology, what is the application, role, and risk. Okay, we also be having a session on impact of technology. Okay, which is which will be about how we can decide in an organization what kind of systems are required. Okay, we'll be speaking about happening things like e-commerce, e-business. Okay, and then we'll also be speaking about the business value. Okay, or how it can be delivered through technology. And there will be one of the biggest uh, program. Okay, which everybody would be expecting is on how to manage data. Okay, and how we can make decision. Okay, how the data visualization happens. Okay, some kind of tools and techniques. Okay, and we will be speaking about the happening thing from last four to five years is digital marketing. Okay, where everything happens. Okay, on thing called as uh, it is the moving from marketplace to market space. Okay, it's about digital marketing. We'll be having the futuristic tools like the big data, IoT, robotics, artificial intelligence. Okay, and uh, VR, okay, and also the machine learning, okay. And then we'll be speaking about the challenges. Ultimately, it ends up there. And uh, finally, we'll be having a session which is very, very crucial, though it is mentioned as last. Okay, we speak about IPR, okay. Uh, so it's all about in mostly in the services space like technology management, IPR plays an important role altogether. Though it is marked as last, okay, sometime it can be the first one. Okay, so that would be the importance for IPR. So these are the sessions, okay, which has been lined up over the time for this one whole week, okay. And each person, each of the uh, speaker would be speaking on certain topic here, okay. And they would be having their own flow, understanding, and things could be very much fine, okay. Because we had heard or heard to the speakers in before, okay. We know how well they are at the subject, okay. And then we hope things must be fine over the time, okay. So today what I'm going to take up is not any of this topic, okay. I'm just, we'll start with the basic outlining, okay, of what really is technology management. So I'll just give you the foundations at my session, okay, followed by other people speaking in the future sessions about what it is really. So what is technology today? Okay, so and things have changed a lot, okay. So earlier we had something, okay, like for example, we need to send a message to somebody else, okay. I remember, even I remember when I was a kid, okay, I used to send it by um, post, okay, or the Indian post, something like this, okay, where I used to put the Christmas greeting or maybe New Year greeting to my cousins, nephews, okay, I used to write uh, physically and then put a stamp on that, five rupees, three rupees like this, and then send it by post. So this was the thing, okay, how we communicated long back. But over the time, after 25, 30 years, when I look into myself, things had changed. Okay, today it has becoming more realistic in terms. Okay, so today people have started using uh, various methods, okay, and something why they are using is that it is becoming real time. Now what I think, I communicate that, very simple, okay. So even I think this is little slow, okay, because people think we are responding to somebody little slow. Sometimes even my relatives, they ask me, I sent you a message in morning, okay, you are replying in afternoon. I said nothing is going to happen, but still they are not happy, okay. So when we look into things, okay, the way how people have started communicating has changed. Today, even the language is getting changed. 
the English what we used to use, okay, or maybe my professors used to use, and what I'm using at what the age is using is totally different. Okay, so the way how we communicate has changed, and this change is due to one thing called as the technology. Today, people are using social media, messaging apps, and even smart watches. Okay, I was really uh, have means when I see people using smart watches, okay, I feel like I'm looking at some James Bond. Okay, so because all these things were like fictional few years back. Okay, when James Bond, okay, uh, when he comes on um, movie and then he says, I'm going to speak to some my enemy or maybe to my colleagues over the phone, or uh, means or the watch. It was something like fascinating, okay, and it was like more of a fiction, okay, but today it has become reality, okay. And even the technology has changed the way we pay bills, we transfer money, okay. So today we are speaking about the digital wallets, online transfers, and payment of money through card. Okay, so that is credit card, debit card, things like that. Okay, so there is one more thing. Okay, is about the technology has changed even how we watch TV. Okay, people used to say, my I remember. Okay, my um, school teacher telling me, don't use idiot box. Uh, I said, well, what is this idiot box? Okay, he said, idiot box means the television. Okay, where you just uh, sit in front of that for hours together. Okay, and then go on watching what it is. Okay, but Today, when I see, is this an idiot box? Okay, I think no. Okay, it has changed. It has passed some exams. Okay, and then it has become smart today. Okay, I can say the idiot has turned to something called as a smart. Okay, so today we are speaking about uh, watching TV. Okay, not only for spending time. Okay, but people are learning so many things. Okay, over television and television have become a medium. Okay, where uh, the teaching learning aspect takes care uh, takes care of. Okay, so today we are not only looking at TV. Okay, just because of the program, there is some change in the way we we see that programs also. Earlier it was a time schedule, like you need to watch television at seven o'clock in the evening to get the prime news. Okay, and you need to uh, wait till nine o'clock to enjoy some music. Okay, you need to wait for some time to view some serials. Okay, but today, no, okay, everything has changed. Today, whatever you want, okay, you can choose that. Okay, you want to learn something, learn that. Okay, or you want to enjoy the time, seeing something. Okay, yeah, you can go about. Okay, and even the experience is getting changed. The earlier TV used to be a big box. Okay, then it became slim, 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 slim. Today, it is so slim that we cannot. Understand where it is okay we can the thickness is reducing day by day and the experiences are going the opposite direction okay today we are speaking about the 2d 3d technologies okay where you can feel like you are re really there inside the program okay and there's one more thing called as ott okay where uh, people are able to get their uh, relevant programs okay by paying some money right so yeah money is one part okay but still i'm speaking about the technology aspect so just a small tv Okay, which was an idiot box has changed a lot. Okay, so how did it change? The underlying thing is the technology. Okay. And today, how things have changed for some other entertainments. Okay, for example, reading books, fantastic. Okay, so for example, we speak about Oscar Wilde. Okay, we speak about um, maybe uh, it could be Salman Rushdie. Okay, it could be there are so many big authors. Okay, where we call it them as uh, classics. Okay, so like uh, George Orwell, okay, I don't know how many people will agree with me, okay, George Orwell, okay, and there are so many people who okay, have written the classics, okay. So when we read about this classic, it was a scenario where at certain age you need to finish some classics to understand how life is going on, okay. So that is how we had been grown, okay, but today it is not like that, okay, things have changed, the book has become very slim, okay, so there is only one tool, okay, you can carry across and you can access n number of books, okay, and you can read at your own pace, okay. What I'm speaking is about the ebooks, okay, which are available today, okay, where you just carry your laptop, okay, or carry your phone, okay, and then you can go about reading it, okay. So everything is becoming e, okay, ebooks, e-music, e-commerce, e-thing, everything has become the electronic way, okay. So the technology has changed. The technology is the underlying thing which is changing. So now let us have a question. Is technology means what? Okay, is it electronic is technology or is internet is a technology? Uh, is it the only thing we can call it as technology? No, that is wrong. Okay, if you think the internet is the thing called as a technology, then we are wrong. So internet or electronic, okay, or sensors, the hydraulics, okay, or maybe the 
other systems what we use okay the, or only the part of technology so technology is a big bundle okay than anything else okay so technology is something very big which people need to understand so technology is not relevant only to one or two aspect of it okay so this bundling of all those things put together we call it as technology and this is how technology is changing for example only internet is available but we don't have a smart tv do we think we can watch programs the same way what we are doing today no i think we cannot do because there is an hardware there is a software to make hardware you need many other products so there is a combination so together uh, for the hardwares and the softwares okay and you also human together we call it as the technology okay what is going to change okay or what is getting changed over the time so now why do we use this technology okay why it is nearly necessary to speak about this technology management over the time of one week when we know what is internet okay when we can transfer money okay when we can do these things is it really to understand yes it's very much essential it's very very much essential okay why because of these four aspects one technology management will help to create the wealth see so sometimes people say okay how to create wealth okay so you have wealth even if you can safeguard the wealth that is enough okay it is almost equal to earning it saving is also equal to earning so technology is helping so many people to save money okay let us say very simple like for example you can remember the olden days when people took checkbooks to the banks waited in long queues spent two hours three hours okay shouted at those people spent energy spent petrol okay and things like that okay the time and the things what you're going to spend is almost like an expense so using this technology today we can transfer the money in no minute okay or lesser than a minute okay what you're going to do okay so what is this this is a saving okay at the personal level so saving is equal to the earning so technology is helping to create wealth for individuals i am giving you only one example but there could be various other ways okay how it has brought down okay so this is what we call it as creating wealth so wealth is getting created not only at individual level at organization level and also at national level today so that is what we speak about is the creating of wealth the second one is about uh, human advantage okay so this will help for the human advantage okay where people are becoming smart okay rather than systems becoming smart this one next is about there is an raising standard of living okay and the quality of life yes uh, it has been very tremendous uh, way okay how people have started living their life okay today we can speak about modern okay people are saying about people are becoming more modern things like that okay no i would say rather than modern people are becoming smart the smart is the underlying thing okay how people can become smart because of the technology okay so today people are not spending people are taking uh, their own directions directions even in physical terms for example before you start a vehicle it is always better okay you look at your destination on a google map and understand how best you can reach there so very simple is it smart yes it is not about showing off it is not about modernization but it is all about being smart so this smartness was able to bring in okay due to technology and one more thing is today everybody is running a race everybody is running a race okay individual also running a race to compete with others organizations are fighting to compete with others and nations are competing with other people to become the best okay today it's a proud moment okay where we say whole of whole of the um, vaccine manufacturing is dependent on indian okay so fantastic thing what we have okay but somewhere we say pharmaceutical and some aspects we are good at but there are certain aspects okay which you need to look into is technology okay where we are lagging a bit okay we need to agree for that okay so today it is a national importance technology is not about the regional okay it's all about the national importance you have technology you are considered to be the best okay today people are respecting some nations okay we shall be very open in understanding that okay when we speak about certain countries i don't want to take the name when we speak about certain countries people starting start having some kind of respect for them either they show off or they don't show show okay things are different okay but why do we respect them okay why do we say yeah this is the best okay because they hold the technology so this is what okay so when we look into things okay we have two different uh, aspect okay how we can define this uh, technology management
So sometime after this uh, session, okay, maybe you can check on internet. Okay, what is this guy spoke about technology management? Okay, and you write technology management, you can get different um, things below in the search engine. Okay, what we speak about is management of technology. Okay, so please don't get confused. Okay, both are same. Both are same. Okay, so when you speak about technology management or management of technology, the same. It's up to the country specification and the author specification. How do they define things? Okay, when they write. Okay, so we shall make it very clear. TM is equal to MOT. <laughs> okay, so this one aspect. So now coming to the next thing. Okay, how do we define? Okay, so this uh, uh, technology management or management of technology. Let me change myself now. Instead of technology management, henceforth I'll be speaking about management of technology. Okay, so that's more good, right? So management of technology when you speak, what's the definition? Okay, it's all about the integration or integrated planning that is all together. Okay, together planning, designing, optimizing the operation and control of technological products, okay, and then process and services related to these technology products. In the program, okay, who know about some history into how this technology has changed? Okay. Uh, especially senior professors would be um, ex or have experienced okay how technology has changed over the years okay so we have brief history okay into how technology has changed like 1950s to this era of 2010 plus okay what I was speaking how it has changed uh, so in 1950s normally uh, technology was mostly related to the r d it was more of a research and development Okay, because everybody was into mass production, mass service, and things like that. Okay, whenever they thought about innovating at the functional level, always they thought our research and development is something related to technology. Only they can do it and nobody else. Okay, but 1970s things changed. Okay, people went for one more thing called as management of the innovations. Whatever is R&D doing, they need to follow that and then make sure it is getting into the market. That is what they came out with. And by 1980s, things changed, okay, where they said about the technology strategy. They thought about how we can use technology in various functional level. That is what they went about. In 1990s, okay, companies said about how I improve the value for the customer, okay, using technology. That is what in 1990s people normally said about. Okay, so that is where the ERP systems, the software, the feedback systems, all these issues came into, means uh, the systems came into picture. And finally, by 2010, we are speaking something better than all these technologies is the automation. Okay, so that is what we are looking into the future. Okay, so now we can broadly divide this into two eras altogether. Okay, below arrow mark you can see, especially from 1950s to 1980s, why did not people speak about technology? Because this particular era was of a plentiful resource. That means there were so many resources available for organizations. Because competition was very small. There were very few companies in a given industry. They never fought about each other, okay? And then they had enough of resources in, in terms of money, okay, in terms of human resource, okay, and things like that. But going on, going on, after 1990s, uh, things have changed, okay? After the LPG era, okay, things have changed where you know, it has become globalized. Competition is increased at increased to very bigger extent. Okay, and then we are speaking about this era as era of accountability. Okay, where every action of an organization is getting into an accountable nature. Okay, each person is getting accountable for each and every action what they come out for an organization or what are the works they do. Okay, so earlier days, okay, it was more of an uh, this technology was more of an funded projects. People used to put money, okay, and they used to say, can we do this? Is it possible? That is what the idea what earlier people had by 1950s, okay, and mostly this kind of uh, new kind of technologies or any enhancements was normally done by a scientist or an engineer. That is what it was done. But today, over the time, you can see things have changed, okay, and this technology management has become a necessary usage. Today, it has become a necessary skill for every human being. Okay, if you are able to operate when you can understand technology easy, you are there in business. If not, you are out. Very simple, right? So including teaching, very simple. Okay, we could have, uh, means uh, there was an experience like 1950s, 60s, more of a chalk piece, okay, and a board kind of a thing. By 1990s, 2000s, there was something called as a uh, 
OHP overhead projector went behind um, processes to write on a sheet okay and then project it overhead okay this was the thing but you know by 2010 things had changed people have started using um projectors okay and then systems and today you can see how it is going on okay today people have started using applications okay more of customization more of sharing information to the selected students groups okay assignments everything is coming into something like this and then it is the next level is automation even in uh, education things is moving towards automation okay so where even today uh, companies like byju's okay and other people are getting into automation where people can learn whatever they want as per their requirement very simple as that okay so this is about the history and evolution okay things have changed over the time that is what my point here right so we shall get into the next slide okay where we speak about what is the key task okay at the national level to manage the mot so as in the earlier slide i said Technology cannot be managed only at the individual level. There must be three parties involved. One at the national level, the other one is organizational level, the third one is individual level. So any technology to be accessible for the general public, okay, so most important person to get that or to permit it is at the national level called as government. Okay, what they must do. So one, one of the key tasks they must do is one, developing the technology, okay, as a strategy for the whole nation. They need to look into what is the technology forecasting, what are the changes coming to the future, okay? And they need to work on what is the right technology to use for a given. Okay, some countries could be good at something, some other country could be at something else, okay? So things like that. They need to justify, okay, why a new technology to be used or not, okay? So, and then sustainable technologies are more important because technologies come, people invest, businesses invest in that technology, but it might fail or in future it might not work. Okay, and this is the responsibility of uh, the government to say which technologies to be allowed to be used by Indian companies. Okay, otherwise people start investing too much. Okay, and then ultimately they will be left out over the time. And next is planning at the next, uh, national technology portfolio. Okay, is that to have not only one technology, a combination of many technologies. Okay. And next is about knowledge management, how to create, how to deploy, okay, and how to um, protect the national technologies, okay, what countries develop, and then managing this technology, and also looking into whether this uh, given technologies are working or not over the time, because it needs to be measured so that they can know how it needs to be improved. Okay, so next is about the technology environment, okay, where it is necessary and how to uh, manage or whether, the, uh, whether a given technology is going to harm the environment or what. Okay, and finally is technology and health, okay, and also the society as whole, okay, they need to manage. So very simple, we can take one technology called as the G technology. So like, for example, you had uh, seen the 2G, 3G, 4G, and today uh, countries are speaking about 5G, okay. So we can look into some countries getting into 5G mode, okay, for example, like South Korea, okay, UK, US is speaking about 5G, okay, where they have already started installation. But in India, is it possible to have 5G? Maybe if you ask, okay, is it 5G necessary for India? I would say not really, not really, because still we are not stabilized with even 4G technology. Okay, if you start giving permission or your government starts giving permission for 5G and things like that, what will happen to those businesses who have invested too much into 3G and 4G? Well, recently we heard about a new BSNL is planning to move from 3G to 4G right now. That means they are very backing. It means they are a little back compared to other people. So governments need to take a decision and they need to manage at a bigger level, okay, which need to be allowed and which not. And sometimes the security purpose. That is what great, okay, India has done today, is that they said about some applications stealing data of individuals, some organizations stealing data of the uh, users, right? So when they look into all these things, when it is of national threat, they want to close it. Fantastic. We respect it, okay? So this is what is going to happen, okay, at the national level. Next, when we speak about the enterprise level, okay, what companies must do, okay, who are developing the technology, as a thing okay so they need to look into the planning okay like deciding what kind of strategy they must use or what is the r&d management what is the innovation management they must look into and finally is about the strategic usage so whatever uh, we are going to speak for any kind of uh, program or maybe some kind of work we do we need to see whether this kind of um, um, option or the function is available at the strategic level 
Okay, why? Because it can be used as an advantage by certain organizations. Okay, yes, technology is also of strategic advantage for some organizations. Okay, so there are very good organizations. We had used technology to become the best. Okay, so including manufacturing space, they are into aerospace and things like that. Okay, so what is this strategic management systems? Okay, or strategic technology management system is about this uh, flow chart. Okay, what you can see here is it starts with an technology creation. It moves to technology monitoring. Okay, and it again goes to assessment of the technology, transfer the technology from the basic level of R&D to uh, usage and the usage people need to accept the technology. They need to use that technology and at certain point of time at given technology becomes matured. It says it gets stagnated. OK, and over the time people will start um, rejecting that technology. Why? Because there's a new technology again created. OK, so this is what in simple we got as technology life cycle. There's a birth. OK, there's a growth. There's a maturity and there is a decline. So this is what we can talk about as technology life cycle. But how do we use it? OK, strategically for an organization is all about this diagram. OK, so now we shall look at the concept of technology management today, the MO, uh, MO, uh, MOT. OK, and then we shall get into the note. OK, so now the concept wise, OK, we'll be running around four to five slides. OK, we shall be a little quick on that. OK, so that I can match up with the ending time. OK, so when we speak about the MOT, there's a notes okay which we need to understand before uh, getting into other things okay so one is that the technology help the organization at two level okay one is at macro as well as at micro level is that they can with the help of the technology and given organization can take care about what is happening outside okay and also they can look into the internal usage for example, like companies using ERP system is at the micro level for themselves. OK, and people using some kind of technology to get data from outside. OK, we call it as macro this is only an example. What I want to tell you and the next one is the role of MOT function in organization is to understand the value of certain technologies for the organization itself. So when we look into what all the technologies available in market, whether all the technologies are useful for a given organization. No, it is not really. So technology is everywhere. Like in the basics, we understand it is into healthcare, it is into manufacturing, engineering, and things like that. Okay. So, do you think any company must have all the technology available? Not really. Not really. Okay. And it is not required. So, companies need to choose which are the technologies really useful for them. Okay. So, that they need to choose and hold it with them. Okay. So, this is what the group of technologies, what they get, we call it as portfolio of technologies. And the next one is continuous development of technology. OK, so that is not only hold to whatever is available today, but over and over. OK, so there must be a development in the technology because a given technology can reach a maturity level very soon. So now there are some uh, concepts, OK, which we need to understand at the enterprise level. One is technology strategy, technology mapping, technology road mapping and technology project portfolio and technology portfolio itself okay so these are the some of the concepts at the enterprise level which we have uh, understood in the previous slides itself so now whatever we say okay so there is some theories required so without the theories teachers are not happy because whatever i speak right? so people will not uh, say uh, whatever Rajesh is speaking is more of an uh, understanding from his side yeah no not really from my side okay? we all believe on theories okay so now technology management is also dependent on certain theories. Okay. So when we speak about proven theories, okay, is one the first theory, okay, which is required to understand the technology is the diffusion of innovations theory, okay, given by Everett Rogers, okay, where he speaks about the S curve, okay, the author speaks about the S curve, okay, where it say there is a growth for any technology. There is a uh, birth, there is a growth, there's a maturity, and finally it will end. Okay, yes, in technology also, this theory holds good. Where every technology is taking birth, it will grow big, it will mature, and it will die. For example, today, 2G, how many people really want to use, use 2G? If somebody says 2G of uh, usage for mobile phones, I think they are called as laggards, okay, where we call them almost they don't know what is um, technology. Okay, so that is what is about. So now what is this S curve? Can we put an S curve for the mobile phone technology? Yes, in the S curve, 
almost the 2G is into the aging or the dying level. Is that the last level? Okay. So can we say about what is 3G? 3G, I think it is into the mature level. Okay, so 3G is in the mature level. Maybe very soon 3G can be also out of market. Okay, so which is under growth for India is yes, 4G. 4G is in the growth level. Slowly everybody wants to use this 4G. Okay, and uh, which is at the very basic level is the 5G. Okay, the future which is going to come now. Okay, we call it as 5G. Okay, so sometime in Hindi we have something called as Kya G. Okay, so this Kya G and this one is no connection. Okay, so we are speaking about the 2G, 3G, 4G and 5G. So we can put them into one S curve and see what is going to future. Okay, yes, it's almost moving, moving, moving and finally it will die. And after 5G is next thing. Yes, there could be next thing called as 6G. We don't know, right? And when it comes, we don't know, right? So this one. So this theory holds goods for technology of any industry. So this is what the technology management person must be understanding this theory first. For every technology, there is a birth and there is a death. How fast we use, how fast we can understand, that is what it is future like. So if you say, is that teams going to stay for a long time? We don't know. Maybe the time teams is into growth stage. After some time, it will become mature and sometime it can die because somebody else can start one more company with a better understanding. So they can speak about 3D involvement and things like that. We don't know, right? So next is about capability maturity model, okay, given by Carnegie Mellon University, okay. So this is one of the fantastic models, okay, we really use in technology management, okay. There's a ranking in this, that is the speciality of this, is that there is CMM level uh, one to level five, okay, and a CMM level five is called as the highest level of uh, technology usage, okay. So what is this uh, CMM model speaks about is, how we can build capabilities over time, okay. So whether a given company has the capability to use the resources. So capability, that is what resource capability will give rise to competency. So that is what we study in strategic management. So here also we are speaking about the capability maturity model where it says over the time due to repeatability and due to management of the resources and the technology, a company will become better and over the time it will learn more by itself. Okay, so that is what we call it as CMM model. Okay, and CMM model is the basics to understand the technology. Where we say, if we start using a technology today, over the time we start using the same technology again and again and again. Okay, so then we will better become better at the technology usage. And over the time we will understand what better can be done after that. So again, the S-curve comes into uh, uh, line. Okay, is that once you go to the next level, the previous technology will become obsolete. This is one thing. There's one more model which we need to understand as teachers is that the hype cycle. Hype cycle was uh, given out by the uh, consulting firm called as Gartner, okay, where over the, uh, or they have an understanding, okay, they have done the research, okay, where they speak about is uh, there is some kind of hype happening for new technologies. So this is not an S curve, they say something like an zigzag, okay, where at the initial stage, a given technology will go very high, very high, and suddenly it will fall. And then it will stabilize and again it will grow. So that is what the hype cycle of the Gartner. So do we say all technologies follow S-curve? Yes, they follow S-curve, but some follow the hype cycle first and then they move towards the S-curve. So what is this hype cycle is before the S-curve where when the technology is launched, okay, immediately it will become very great, very big. People start using it big, big, big way. Suddenly it reaches some uh, maturity, means immediate maturity. Then automatically it will fall. And people will say there is no great thing about this technology. Just people are speaking about it. And it will fall to a certain extent, okay, where people will say this is the right way of using this technology. That is the level. And then furthermore, slowly, slowly it will pick up. So then this uh, S-curve will come into picture. So this hype cycle is prior to the S curve for any technology. So these are the three things, okay, which we can note down, okay, and over after this session, okay, maybe if you have time, you can go through this theories, okay, which will help you to understand what is the basics of this technology management. So now, what is the need, okay, for management of technology? Okay, one, it will provide the organization with leadership. Okay, today, if any organization, any country, any individual, if they are able to use technology to a better way, obviously they can be the leaders. Everybody wants to be leader. Okay, one, one, when we are able to be leader, when we are using something very latest, 
when we know the technology and how to save time, how to save energy, how to save money. With all these savings, we become the better leaders. Yes, this is what the first thing. The second one is the technology will facilitate the innovation to work. OK, so because we speak about innovate or perish. OK, so there is one more aspect or in faculty where we say publish or perish. Uh, that is one way with the uh, UGC and ASCT, okay, where we need to publish and then we need to stay. Okay. Yeah. So uh, this is one thing. Okay. And uh, next is about Rajji, sir. Mm -hmm. uh, you have last 10 yeah, minutes. Yeah, I will I will uh, wind it up. Okay. So I'll just get into a few of the oh, there are more uh, only around four to five slides, I think, not more than that. I will be a little quick after this. Uh, thank you. Thanks for that. Okay. And now we shall get into the next one. Is that what is the need of this? Is to commercialize the tech advancements, okay. So to make sure the technology which is coming into, okay, whether it is gaining some advantage to the organizations, okay, and give some kind of capability to face the industry and also the globalization era, okay. And also it helps to develop the capacity, okay, to become a superpower, okay, technological superpower, okay. And at, at two levels, okay, again, the superpower can be a nation or superpower can be an individual. Okay, and then it will also help to enhance the knowledge and skills. Okay, for efficient transfer of management and also the technology itself. Okay, so this is about things. Okay, now why this management of technology is necessary? Okay, why we need to manage the technology? Why we need to plan so much? Why we must do strategic management? So our strategic uh, technology management. Why all these things are necessary? There is a rational. Is it necessary as a professor? We need to understand all these things. Yes, we need to understand. OK, so what is this rational one? We need to focus on innovation. OK, so there must be as an individual or organization or as a nation, we must focus on innovation. There are some research consequences today. OK, research is not happening to a bigger extent. People are feeling it risky. OK, and moreover, TLC, that is the technology life cycle is becoming short for most of the products and services. OK, so we need to look into this technology management when to use what? where to invest money, which one to buy. Today, people are uh, fearing to buy a mobile phone. Really, you look at the younger generation, they feel fear or they have a fear to buy a phone. Why? Because they think today I invest money. After one month, there is a new model in market, which is at a better price, better options. So do you think I need to invest this month? So you can see like this, okay, at the individual level itself, there's a confusion. So you can think about the organization and you can think about the nation. Okay, what do you, what need to be invested and what not? Okay, so this is one thing and then MOT is also required. Okay, because every function, okay, in an organization is combined with something else. Okay, so to make sure all the functions work properly. Okay, we need to look into technology. OK, we need to understand the intellectual property rights, OK, because most of the money in technology is in the form of intellectual property rights. You create something, how to safeguard that? You want to give to somebody, how to make sure they use properly? All these things are dependent on intellectual property right? because for technology advancement, too much of money is spent in research and development. To get back that money, you need to be very much clear with the intellectual property rights. And a growing need to understand both business and also technology today. And MOT is the key to performance in every sphere of activity, okay, in the current millennium. So now what is that future, okay, for technology, where all things we need to concentrate, okay, or we can speak to our students or to anybody for that in the market space. What is that uh, the technology is going to play in the future? Is one hyper automation. Today automation has over okay 2010 automation came into picture, but today by 2020 we are not speaking about automation. We are speaking about hyper automation. That means a combination of artificial intelligence and machine learning. So this is what today automation is not about doing only one work. Today people are looking at making the complete process automation. OK, so today companies want these things. OK, so in future, everything is like this. OK, so most of the processes they want to combine together from the start to the end. OK, we call this to be an hyper automation, but it will not happen so easily. OK, but they have with the help of artificial intelligence and machine learning this is what is going to happen in the future. Next is about multi experience. OK, today people are looking into not about um, technology, to the literate people. Okay, today people are looking into people to literate technology. 
Okay, so earlier people were using our technology to get themselves educated. But no, today people are looking into how we can teach uh, technology a little more. Okay, so how we can improve that. That means uh, people are becoming more uh, research focused is what, okay, multi experience. Next is about democratization. Okay, so this democracy, we speak about getting the technology to everyone. That is the focus. Today, people are looking or any kind of technology people want to develop, they are only looking into how this technology can help other people. Okay, whether this can become the basis of something else. Okay, so this is what the thinking is going on. Okay, and this happens in most of the things. Okay, so there is no much of training required when we do this democratization. Okay, you give some kind of technical experience, okay, to somebody else, okay, where there is no much of training required. And mostly we look into them developing something better. Okay, for example, this kind of things are coming in form of R software. You can see the software which people are using today is R. Okay, it's all about what? It's about democratization, okay, where they say they have created a software platform, okay, where people can use it for free. That's all very simple. But is it only free? No, it is not only about free. Okay, it's all about develop some, something more by them to others. This one. And next topic we're going to speak about is human augmentation. Okay, where today people are speaking about some kind of uh, devices. So today, not only about um, uh, technology is only seeing on the computer. No. Okay, today people are becoming part of the technology. Okay, so today experiments are done how to move from one place to another place using of some kind of devices. Okay, where computers can understand what we are doing. Okay, so computer is becoming part of technology and technology is becoming part of human being. Okay, so these are the combinations. Okay, what you are looking at is the human augmentation. Next is about transparency and traceability. It's a very big uh, debate which is going on. Today, whatever we are using, it has been uh, traced. For example, if you want to understand somebody who is that, okay, or what you want to know about them, you just take their mobile phone and the password. And that will say, what is that person? That means there is so much of information in a mobile phone about a person. Okay, and now, is this information safe? What we do, that is what our mind is all about. Okay, we are using mobile phone for everything what we are interested in. When somebody looks into our mobile phone, they will come to know really what kind of person we are. So that is what it is all about. So mobile phone is almost very dangerous thing, right? But we must use it. We are using it. Now the question lies, whatever you are using, is it only to you or somebody else is also watching on that? To be very frank, yes, there are somebody who is watching what we do. These are organizations. These are the people who create applications. They are the people who had come out with the technology, what we are using. Okay, but is it right on their part to see what I am going to do? It's a big question. Companies say, I am giving you technology, so I have the right, because we have accepted the terms and conditions of usage. But as a human individual, we do, do save some kind of information on that, which are more personal in nature, more um, important to your life, okay, and things like that. And see, somebody takes it away, okay, and it becomes very crucial for us to safeguard. So today technology is also looking into certain aspect of how we can make it as a closed loop at individual level or can we make some uh, transparency very open okay, from the organization level. All these things are dependent on future technology. So next is about people are speaking on edge computing. Okay, So where uh, edge computing is a simple technology. Um, Wherever the information is available, you take that information to the nearest place, process it. I'm sorry, data is available at a certain place. Take your system there, okay, understand, collect the content, okay, and then um, process it and then give out the information to the nearest places. So it's all about like a localization process. Edge computing is more of a localization process. It's a design. It's almost a network design. We speak about this topology. This is one which is going to happen in future. Next, there's a distributed cloud. Okay, cloud is all about uh, saving your information with um, other servers okay, outside where you cannot understand where it is and the other person can also not know okay, where your information is saving. Okay. So this is about the distributed cloud in the future. Okay, so that is going in a big way. Next, autonomous things is happening in a very big way. Okay, like the robots, drones, ship and appliances. There are so many things okay, where uh, people are using this kind of technology to increase the um, or decrease the real reliability of the humans okay on certain dangerous activities okay 
so which uh, where we call it as a threat to the human being okay when you want to explore those things you try to use this kind called as autonomous things it is also part of technology and the examples are like drones and robots and the very next one is a uh, blockchain okay i no need to speak about blockchain much because here so many people are there okay who would be experts okay in blockchain okay but only thing is that whatever this is the blockchain today okay it is not successful frankly speaking because uh, everybody don't want the interlinking of information okay but we want something called as the practical blockchain that is what people are working for the future okay blockchain is a fantastic concept but still the information or the step by step entries which we do into blockchain is a little tedious um, work okay or it is not so convenient to change after doing an activity this one so with these things okay so there are some recent works okay done by the government of india okay we can refer these things like atmanirbhar okay with ifco so at the national level government is combining with so many laboratories and things like that to come out with a better program okay so finally what we want to speak about is very simple the conclusion is the success of an organization depends on learning innovation and constant change and every organization will constantly have to acquire the new knowledge and remain competitive every organization must do this if some organization don't get the technology they will be out of the market so technology management is very crucial next is change and uncertainty is very very crucial today we don't know what will happen coming here we never thought this year 6 months or 8 months will be a lockdown kind of situation last year nobody would have even thought in their wild dreams right so this is what we don't know what is there for 2021 for 2022 and things like that so organizations need to find some kind of plan okay and be prepared for the uncertainty from teaching point of view very simple we want to make it is every management student today uh, who is doing an mba or pgm program they are interested in technology management they want to know what is technology happening or what is the technology usage outside so how it can be used for new product innovation so as faculty members okay we shall not forget okay or we shall not avoid these questions let us learn some theories let us go through some models let us understand the technology importance let us go through this ftp for one week know something and then impart this knowledge into class session so with these things okay so these are some of the references which we i have used to create my class today and i thank you thank everyone today in the session for giving me this chance to interact with you okay though time was very short okay so i have been little quick in certain uh, slides okay i hope you people will not mind because this is just the basics of what is technology management i wanted to say as a framework i don't want to do very small uh, linings okay which you already know or i don't want to get into too much depth which will be covering for next uh, one week or that is next four four five days to go about so this is about the presentation today i hope uh, it was little um, understandable okay and also little vague for some of us okay who are there uh, yes over the time when you understand all the basic concepts then you can relate my uh, slides okay whatever you have done so these are few things okay which i wanted to share as an intro okay so to make it in one or two lines i would say technology management is the thing which is required today technology management is using the technology first of all and then taking advantage of out of it and also making sure you are safeguarding the technology you are not buying something which is not required so you must know what to buy what not to buy where to invest where not to invest and things like that okay so this is all about the technology management okay so with this i will be ending my uh, session okay i am open for question and answers okay and also suggestions the q and a is only for students okay but here we have we i need to take some suggestions for anyone here okay who would like to add some value for this presentation so as a group we can understand what it is so i thank uh, jivaratnam ma'am for giving this opportunity okay and also my college okay thank you very much okay and i am available here online okay so we can have discussion if time permits <laughs> thank you very much thank you thank you everyone we will just keep it open for 1 minute for qa if you have any questions you can yes ma'am please go ahead ma'am we are sir is there please go ahead uh sir this is shruti here from from davangere university ha hello ma'am 
Hello, uh, it Shruti was really an excellent presentation. You did not give a chance, you know, to question any kind of uh, question that is uh, put from the presentation. It was really an excellent <laughs> thing. Thank you, thank you very much. You never gave a chance to, you know, question anything from your presentation that is there. No, thank you, ma'am. Thank you very, very much. It was very simple, clear. As a research scholar, for me, it was mm. really very simple and clear cut shot. Yes, ma'am, because I don't want to go for basics. Okay, I did my best, but still, I think there is much scope for development. Okay, I am very much happy to hear this. Uh, it is a big motivation for me. And yes, and I, I, I also decided to write a research, uh, secondary research data paper on this now. Yeah, fantastic, ma'am. Good, yeah, good thank enough. Thank you so Okay, much. if something goes through, okay, please do share some info to us. <laughs> Definitely, I'll do that, sir. Thank you so yeah, much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Shruti, ma'am. Thank you very yes, much. Sir. Rajesh, sir, before uh, we conclude the session, uh, thank you so much and uh, okay, it was a really wonderful session. I thank you very and, much. I thank you, you madam, very much. Okay. And also, all the participants for giving this opportunity. It was a great uh, person uh, morning in my big experience after uh, post or maybe post lockdown. Okay, big experience for me. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Okay, hope to catch up most of you uh, offline some other time.